Champions. Hello. How are you guys doing? It's been a long time since I did a call. No, do we agree? I feel like it's been a long time. If you guys don't miss me, then I don't know what to tell you. How are we doing? Can we have some energy in the Why are you guys so quiet? Where's the cameras? I didn't forget the culture. We only have like six cameras open. Omaima, hello, Michelle. Hi. Nicholas, I see your laptop, but you're here. Daniel, hello. Ed, Amalia, is it Amalia? Hi. So only these people have their cameras on. Great. She was fantastic. Well, can we turn some more? I won't start. John. Hey, man, it's been a while. Nicholas, hello. I won't run the training, so... Let's get some cameras on. Let's get more more people in the call. Are we ready for today's training? I'm ready. I've been ready. I've been praying for this since yesterday. Let me let me ask you guys a question. Did you we all um we all talk about entrepreneurship and how amazing it is. But do people talk to you guys about what, like, what the what some people face during entrepreneurship? There's certain things people just don't understand about it. Did anyone have that talk with you before? Today, I want to talk to you, to you about what people don't get about entrepreneurship. Things people never understand when I'm done, Amir. Let me, let's have an honest kind of training today. Is that okay? Drop some ones in the chat if that's okay. Rakan, what's Rakan? Oh my God. What's wrong with Rakan? Let's drop some ones in the chat. If you want to have an honest training with me today. Let me tell you something. Entrepreneurship is hard. Physically, emotionally, you can face doubt. You're going to face, sometimes you face anxiety, despair along the way. Every entrepreneurship struggles with these feelings. Every entrepreneurship. So why are why are they willing to face the vulnerability, the emotion, the emotions that's going up and down? The risk of it being public, like their failure is public. Do you guys know the answer? Why? Like, why are they willing? It's easy because they have no choice. They have no choice. For entrepreneurs, one, the voice in their head is louder than every other voice they ever hear. Others may doubt. Others may criticize. Others may judge. Others may disapprove. You don't care. You don't care. You see all these opinions of what they are, not right, not wrong. They're just data. So you pretty much sift through the data for the actual pretty much nuggets you can use. The rest you just ignore. You just ignore. Why? Why? Because you may respect the opinions of others, but you believe at, but you believe in your ideas. You believe in your abilities. You are dedicated. You believe most importantly in yourself and what makes you want to live your life your own way and not anyone else's way. So that's number one. Number two, they believe that how they play the game is more important whether they win or lose. If you're an entrepreneur or you call yourself an entrepreneur, you would rather fail on your own terms than succeed on someone else's. 
You'd rather reach for your own future than have your future lie in someone else's hand. You feel it's better to burn out than to fade away. Sure, you want to win. You're driven to win, but you want to change the rules. Create your own pretty much playing field and win the game you want to play. Because winning a game in a way you're forced to play would still feel like losing, in my opinion. Do you guys agree? Winning a game in a way you're forced to play would still feel like you're losing, Amir. Agreed? So that's number two. Number three, don't make choices. We create choices. Entrepreneurs, they don't make choices. They create them. Most people, they choose a column A or B. But entrepreneurs, real entrepreneurs, they pretty much glance from A, B, and then often they create their own C, D, and E. There was one time I read, let me actually pull it out from my phone. Let me see. I wrote it down yesterday. It said, let me, it said, every time you want to make an important decision, there are two possible courses of action. You can take a look at the area of choices that present themselves, pick the best available option and try to make it fit. Or you can do what the true entrepreneur does, figure out the best conceivable option and then make it available. Do you guys want me to say that again? I'm going to explain. Every time you want to make an important decision, there are two possible courses of action. You can look at the area of choices that present themselves, pick the best available option, and try to make it fit, try to make it work for you, or you can do what real entrepreneurs do, figure out the best conceivable option, then make it available. That's why they often accomplish the inconceivable because entrepreneurs, that word truly doesn't mean what everyone thinks it means. So you have to have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. You have to come up with, I always come up with plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E. I always figure it out and I see what is going to work best. Number four, entrepreneurs. They, I don't know if I, I want to say this. Look, talent is important, but the ability to work together, throw the egos out of the door, make individual act sacrifices when it's necessary is the only way any team can succeed. So entrepreneurs enjoy succeeding through others. I enjoy my success when I have someone on my team succeeding. This is their business, no? Yes, sometimes I have to focus on myself as an entrepreneur. But I also have to enjoy succeeding through my team. The most important or the most satisfying feeling 
the point where I feel that I'm happy is when I see people on my team succeed. I'm not going to be selfish. Some, I, I'm not saying anyone on the call, but I know some people are selfish. Some people, all the information is to themselves. Some people have a lot of team members that are, they're not growing because no information is being shared with them. I won't ever call myself a successful entrepreneur if I'm succeeding by myself. I actually said that to Christian before. I was like, hitting ranks is so great. I it's a, We enjoy it. But I'm not going to enjoy any rank and I don't want to hit any more ranks if I don't see my people succeed. To me, it doesn't matter. So entrepreneurs, real entrepreneurs, actually enjoy succeeding through other people, through their team. Number five, entrepreneurs, they don't need to be disciplined because they can't wait to do all the things that bring them closer to achieving their goals. Say what again? They don't need to be disciplined because they can't wait to do all the things that bring them closer to achieving their goals. Discipline, it often boils down to finding a way to do the things you need to do. But entrepreneurs, they can't wait to do the things that they need to do. They have goals. They have dreams. They know every task that they have to complete. They know every assignment they have to do. Because it takes them one step closer to achieving their goals. They're achieving their dreams. That's why entrepreneurs can, they pretty much can have fun when they're making, doing their tasks or doing their assignments. And when I have an assignment, oh my God. I cannot wait to finish that assignment. I am enjoying it. I'm having fun with it. When you have a clear line of sight between what you do and where you want to go, work is no longer just work. I had one of my um, my team members, she actually came. I, I think you guys know her, Nadia. She was here. And she's like, Ugh are you not like tired like you work 24 7 I'm like she's like the business is in your blood it's like you can't live which is true a work is not work for me I enjoy horseback riding so much this is like if you want to make me happy put me on a horse and let me be I can be gone for six seven hours no problem now the business took over. I don't want to go horseback riding. That's not what's going to make me happy. When I'm upset, I work. When I'm sad, I work. When I'm happy, I work. This is what makes me happy. It's no longer, it's not work to me. It's something I, I have, I know what I want. And I know where I want to go. So this work is not work. Work is exciting. It's fulfilling. So you need to sit by your by yourself and decide if what you're doing right now, it's meaningful. It's fulfilling something. It's fulfilling a void in your life. It's called harmony. Does that make sense? The next point is they don't want to simply gain a skill and then live a routine. A lot of people work to gain a skill or achieve a position or rank up so they can pretty much relax, so they pretty much can get comfortable. They don't want to gain any more knowledge. They think they've worked hard 
it's not a bad thing. Everyone's like definition of success is different, I guess. If I ask you what is success to you, what would you guys say? What is success to you? We have how many people in the call today? We have 52 people on the call. Success is freedom. Freedom, peace, control. Helping millions of people achieving wealth and happiness. Time freedom. Okay, what else? 52 people. We got five answers. Peace of mind. Financial freedom. Freedom. Being able to help others while achieving my own goals. Being a better version of myself than yesterday. To me, success is growing, believe it or not. To me, success is growing. More knowledge, more skills. That's what success. I used to say success is when my dreams turn into reality. But that changed over time. That changed actually this past year. When anyone now asks me what is success to you, Nurhan, yes, it's of course helping other people grow. But it's also me growing, expanding my brain cells more and more and more. Entrepreneurs, they, they pay their dues. They want to keep paying their dues. They look at themselves in the mirror and think, okay, what have you done for me lately? I look at myself all the time. And I ask myself that question. Nurhan, what have you done to me lately? What has changed from yesterday till today. And I get so upset. And I don't have an answer. And that's why I start going out. And I start doing more. And I start learning more. And I start gaining more knowledge. I start de developing. right so my question is to you guys do you guys ask yourself that question or no no one lately yes before i go to bed i ask myself what did today make myself proud yes i can do it more you definitely need me to do it more because i will tell you one thing when i started doing that my business turned around completely i'm gonna ask you guys a question Do you think as entrepreneurs, we are able to pretty much like make a movement on our own? Are we willing, are we supposed to be willing to take a risk? Yes, if the vision is strong enough. I'll tell you guys a story. Not a really a story, just a short. The past few months, I made a decision. I took a decision. 
I have a team. I have a big team. Arabic, North American. And it was, it's good to be around my team. But there was something missing though. There's something not being said. I just didn't know what it was. But I had to take a risk of Nurhan. You need to do something different that's pretty much going to shake the industry. It was hard. I stood up. I was so vulnerable. I had to say to myself things that I wasn't able to say to myself. I had to take a chance. There was some consequences, but I accepted these con consequences. But guess what? When I decided that I was going to take him when I was when I decided to take a risk when I decided that I was gonna stand, my business grew also 10X. I had to take a risk. Some of us are scared though. Some of us are afraid. They're too comfortable where they are. I'm not telling you stop doing what you're doing. But if you're stuck right now, it's because you need to do something differently. You need to take a risk, but you need to know what it is that you're going to do. I knew exactly what I was going to do. A lot of entrepreneurs, they think, why not me? A lot of uh, here, who who here on the call actually asks themselves, why not me? When they see a rank up in the chat and they say, why not me? Be honest. We're having an honest conversation. Who here asks, why not me? Me, me. Me. Who else? It's okay. What's, what what happens on the call stays on the call. <laughs> I used to ask myself that question. I'm not shy to say it. Why not me? When I used to see him when I, before, when I used to see ambassador popping up ambassadors and they're popping up platinum ambassadors and they're popping diamond ambassadors as presidentials, I'm like, why not me? But at that point, I knew that success is, it's not, it's, it's difficult to achieve. But that's why we have to fail sometimes. That's why we do it. A lot of, a lot of people say, why don't I get what this person has? Why aren't my friends more supportive, more supportive of me? Why can't I catch a break? Why is everything happening to me? So pretty much to keep it short, why me? But entrepreneurs, they ask, why not me? You know something, sometimes entrepreneurs, they will pretty much, let's say they open a shop in the same location where the same shop failed before. They just do it purposely because they're saying they didn't succeed by why not me?
So do you guys have an answer to that question or no? You should not ask that badly. You can do it and take care of your motivation. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. If you want to really think about it, there's no real answer. Because if you're truly willing not to just dream, but you're actually going to try hard, there is no reason you can't succeed. Nothing is going to matter to you. It's okay to ask, why not me? It's totally fine. But some people ask, why not me? And they sit in a corner and cry. I used to ask, why not me? And like Gabriel, I think, said, I used to take everything that was being said to me and make it a motivation. It used to be a push. And I keep going. And I keep going. And I keep going. I take the answer of why not me and see what I can do. For example, I was stuck for the longest time, but I wasn't on social media. And I keep asking, why not me? Why is this person hitting Diamond Executive and not me? Oh, you're not on social media. Okay, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. One, two, three, four, five. And then I get to ask why not. I, I will see if I get to ask why not me or not. So my question is to you, to you, why do you feel that you're stuck? Or actually, the first question is, do you guys feel, any of you feel that they're stuck right now? And they're just not seeing any success? I see it. Me, me, me. I see it. Can I ask you a question? What is it that you did? differently than yesterday what is it that you did differently since yesterday you didn't succeed yesterday so what did you do differently to succeed today amir when i'm done no my son loves to annoy me when i'm on call so i do apologize i work all day to me that is the worst excuse in the world. I work all day. I'm sorry. I do respect everyone that works. I worked. I worked. But to me, that's not an excuse. Guess what? If you don't change something, you'll always be where you're at. You will always be at that job and you will always see him working all day. Make two hours of your day you can turn your life around. Exactly. It's a reason for you to work harder. You might lose sleep instead of you going home, showering, and getting into bed. No. Go home, shower, sit, work on you, see what you're going to do differently to get rid of your nine-to-five job. But ask your question instead of complaining, oh, I am stuck. I don't know what I'm doing differently. What did you do differently than yesterday what is it that you did different if you think about it so most of the answers are gonna be nothing so don't complain about success don't say why not me well i'm here on the call i i, I didn't i didn't mean anything great <laughs> i'm just saying i'm just saying like you I'm I'm proud of you for being on the call. You could have skipped it. You're right, but you didn't. Which means deep down you want to get rid of that nine to five job. But after that call, after this call, when you're done with work, what are you going to do differently? What action are you going to take to be on all the calls? To maybe host your own call what are you going to do different? That's my question. I said, does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. 
That's a great question. Gotta keep posting. Exactly. Look, like I said in the beginning, entrepreneurship is not easy. Mentally, physically, emotionally, it's not easy. But the difference is some people are okay to go through it all just in the beginning to make their life better five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, maybe to make their kids' life better and easier. They don't want them to go through what they went through. You're digging the path for other people. I was on a call with Christian the other day and he said something that actually got to me. He was said, you know, my job as a mentor is to make it easy for you. I went through certain things in my past four years so that you don't have to go through it. So you can achieve success faster than me. So that is what you're doing. Look at him. Just look at him. I don't know what to say. Christian, you need to crop this out of the call. <laughs> it's okay, though. Like, I'm okay with him doing these things. It's fine. It, it shows. Look, I'm so against this whole perfect, you know, life. I don't have any distractions. I am the biggest distraction. Look at him. He's just right there in the call. <laughs> but that's okay that's a beauty it, it, to me this is the best thing ever because he's the reason i do everything he is the reason i'm hosting a call he is the reason i'm hitting the ranks he is the reason i'm doing everything it's okay i used to get bothered in the beginning believe it or not when he used to hop on my calls but now i just really don't care because he's a part of my journey. How old is he? He's four. He started going to school too, which is crazy to me. Oh my God. I can't explain the feeling. <laughs> anyway, back to our topic. Uh, the whole point of this is that entrepreneurship is easy, but anyone can do it. If you're only willing. <laughs> Ask yourself every day, what am I doing differently? What did I gain today? What is success to you? Try to think of that a little bit. What is actually success to you? I, I don't like the whole time and freedom answer. We all give that. I want you guys to think of something different, like deep, dig deep into your thoughts. What is success to you? And at that point, I promise you, things will change. When I knew success to me was knowledge, skills, growing, my business transformed in five months. I'm not, like, I am such an honest person, transparent. I, this is what happened. So... What I want you guys to do is after we end this call, I'm done. I want you to go into the builder's chat and I want you to type why you chose entrepreneurship. Why you chose entrepreneurship and what is success to you. What books did I read? I honestly didn't read books. Atelia, I listened to a lot of podcasts. A lot of them and they were in Arabic. I found the person that really truly inspired me and he is such a successful entrepreneur. I've always seen him on my social media, but I didn't like really pay attention to him. But that guy inspires me. His name is Anas. He inspires me. 
And I just listened and listened to his podcasts every single morning. And everything I knew about entrepreneurship changed. Everything I thought success was changed. And at that point, I changed. I wrote it last week on my story. I am not the same person I was five months ago. I'm not. It's hard to believe. But I am not the same person. I changed completely. My mindset changed. The way I speak changed. The way I stand up changed. The way I train changed. Because I knew what the definition of success is to me personally. So your guys' assignment today is write it down because I am going to be watching the builder's chat. What is entrepreneurship to you? And why did you choose it? And what is success to you? Oh my God, this is your assignment. You need to make sure everyone drops that in the builder's chat. Can we do that? First, first person already done. And let's see. Maybe someone is going to say something that is going to change something for someone else. Because I, without no doubt, you guys, the people that stayed on the call, 45 people, you stayed for a reason. Do you have tips to figure out what success truly means to us? To me, like I told you, it was podcasts. That was, it, it, it was. I had never really listened to podcasts before. But like I, I found that person that inspired me. I found that person that pretty much like his words get to me. And I saw like I literally researched his journey from when he was born till today. And it changed everything. I related to him a lot. He has kids. He had difficult times in his life. So find what inspires you. Ask your question. Ask that question to you if you have to every single day until you figure it out. But you will figure it out. But it doesn't matter. Until you find the real answer, I still want you to drop it in the chat. Okay? Done? He wants to say bye to all of you. Dude, you want to say hello? No. Come say hello. No. Okay, then. He does not want to say hello. He he does not like anyone. <laughs> but we're good to go. Are we going to do that? Are we going to drop it in the chat? Um, this is going to be the first of many calls. Um, Maybe some of you know me. Maybe some of you don't. I don't know. But if you don't, you'll be seeing a lot more of me. Um, I was away for a reason, but now we're back stronger, better, better mindsets, better, not more knowledge. So I'm excited to get back in the game. I'm excited to get to know every single one of you connect. I love to connect with a lot of people. So please reach out if you ever need anything. And yeah, let's, uh, let's make some noise in GC. Let's show GC who GC champions is. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.